I have tried to film this video over 20 times. This is how much I wanted this to be perfect and clear, not only for you guys that watch my shit, but for everyone out there that needs to hear this video. I have seen so many things happen in the 13 years I have been watching Dance with the Stars. I have seen Kelly Monaco beat out John O'Hurley. I have seen Master P get an 8 out of 30 for his Paso Doble. I have seen Mario Lopez lose to Emmett Smith. I have seen Jerry Springer on this show, and he was abysmal. I have seen Marie Osmond faint on live television. I have seen Sabrina Bryan get eliminated not once, but twice, in the same week and in the same date, and that shit is still creepy as hell. I have seen Steve Wozniak do the worm. I witnessed Sean Johnson beat Gilles Marini by less than 1% in the voting demographic. I watched some cast members of season 9 come down with the swine flu. Tony Davolani wanted to quit after dealing with Kate Gosselin. From the late Florence Henderson getting sexual with her rumba, rumba excuse me, to Bristol Palin in a monkey suit. I've seen it all. I remember the season with two Bills. One was a science guy and the other a beloved redneck comedian. And I loved them both in their own rights. I cried seeing Alfonso Ribeiro do the Carlton for the first time in so many years. I cried the whole time Bindi Irwin competed on this show. I witnessed two deaf contestants compete on this show, one of which actually won the whole damn thing. I saw people finally giving Emma Slater a chance and winning a Mirrorball trophy. I got to see my late grandfather so happy seeing David Ross, a former catcher that won the World Series with the Chicago Cubs, do a quick step to go Cubs go. I have seen a ton of crazy costumes from Mark Ballas. I have witnessed Derek Huff win six times. We had to deal with Tanya Harding in the all-athlete season. You would think that we have seen it all on this program. Well, my friends, on November 19th, 2018, some of us that still love this program and what it used to stand for, we witnessed the day that our beloved show, for what it was basically known for, post-classic era of ballroom standards on this show, essentially die. The day that country radio personality Bobby Bones was crowned the Mirrorball champion alongside our resident redhead, Sharna Burgess. Now I know what you're all thinking, Katie, how could the show be dead? Tom and Aaron literally just said, see you next year. That's the thing. Tom and or Aaron would always say, see you on Insta next season's premiere date here. Now, why would they say, see you next year? Either we were only getting one season a year from now on, or they're even uncertain of the future of the show, especially with the outcome of this season's finale. Well, to make sense of anything, let's start back to when this season began, September 24th, 2018. It was fresh, it was a new season, and everybody was so excited. No one was as more excited as me, considering Ivana Lynch was a cast member, and I have loved her ever since her first appearance in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. You had your good dancing, you had your okay dancing, you had disaster dancing thanks to Grocery Store Joe. And then there was Bobby Bones, who had full of energy and looked like he was having a spastic episode after completing his dive. And if you recall my premiere commentary, I said he scared the living fuck out of me doing that. Like, I get you're excited, but bro, you gotta chill out for veteran fans of this show. Bobby scores a 20 out of 34, no big deal. You think he's gonna relax and be focused now more so that we got the premiere jitters out of the way, right? Right? 
Now, I did a record a commentary for week two due to family situations, but I did watch the show. I believe for night one on that week, Bobby did a foxtrot to Mr. Frank Sinatra's signature song, New York, New York. I thought he was handling it well. He was doing a great job. And then he flossed. And I think that's when half of the viewers lost respect for him. Because in their eyes, he not only disrespected Mr. Sinatra's son, but he disrespected Sharna's hard work and her choreography. Because of his flossing, he once again received a 20 out of 30. One of the only good dances from him that I can remember, it was really sincere. I knew he was really sincere about it. It was his most memorable year dance, and he did a contemporary to A Million Dreams from the Greatest Showman. And according to my notes on here, he got a 23 out of 30 for that week, and I thought that was pretty solace. But let's get into some issues this season had. From weeks 1 to 6, we lost Nikki, Danielle, Nancy, Tanache, and Mary Lou. Do you see the problem here? It was nothing but women being eliminated. No one was really bothered by it until Tanache was eliminated in week four. Now, I can vouch and say everyone, including myself, was essentially focusing all the blame on Grocery Store Joe. Even after Tanache, he was still in the competition, failing consistently week after week after week. Until we finally got rid of his ass in the same week that apparently we decided that getting rid of Juan Pablo was a good idea as well. And it wasn't. My guess was to boost the fucking ratings. While spewing all the constant blame and hatred on Grocery Store Joe and his fan base is justified to most of us in the fandom, here's the other question I must raise. Are the same people part of the reason we helped Bobby and his fan base advance each week? I mean, we laughed at Bobby, we cried with Bobby, we were encouraging... But did we really let Bobby Bones get a free pass on his dancing skills while we were giving Joe hatred on his? As I'm recording this video, Bobby being declared the winner on Dance with the Stars has been thumbs down by 3.7k viewers. That's fucking bad, you guys. I have never seen anything like this. The second dislike winning moment belongs to my boy Rashad, and his was 1.1k? Lori's moment? Only thumbs down by 89 humans. And for Niall DeMarco? 188. I can't really say for the others since the official YouTube channel didn't exist when the show first started, and they basically deleted a massive amount of content around the time that season 21 was happening, so I guess we'll never know that part of the outcome. But back to what I was trying to discuss. What made us decide to let Bobby slide through? Was it because he was likable? Was it because he danced better than Joe? I can attest on the factor that none of us even knew who Bobby was when he was announced as a cast member. I remembered his name because my grandma wanted to watch the rebooted American Idol and Mr. Bones himself was a mentor to the hopeful singing schmucks. I mean, let's face it, trying out for American Idol these days is basically old news. You're not going to be the next Kelly Clarkson or the next Carrie Underwood. Try your luck on The Voice and see if you're still relevant after a year or so. My apologies to the late Christina Grimmie and my boy Billy Gilman on that statement, but in a way it's true. Back to Bobby, he was an average, ordinary guy that half of the American demographics seemed to really take a liking to. I mean, what do you want? He's got a radio show, he's wrote books... He seems really fun and positive and energetic. He was the unsung hero in everyone's eyes. He busts his ass doing more radio talk shows. I almost fucked that up. I'm so sorry. He busts his ass doing morning radio talk shows, interviews, and still competing on a dancing competition. All in the same year. But anyone could do that if they have the time and energy for it when they sign up for Dance with the Stars. It's nothing we haven't seen before. Honestly, though, I felt like Bobby took this whole ordeal as both serious and a joke. I followed him on his social media because I thought he was a really sweet guy, but I didn't agree with some of the things that he would post about. For example, if someone sent him a comment or a tweet that wasn't positive, 
He would screenshot it and post it to his followers and be like, Oh, ha, ha look at this troll, guys. <laughs> now, a mature person would just ignore the comment and just gradually move on with their life. No disrespect, but I don't think Bobby is the kind of person that just lets things go. It just seems so childish to me. I'm looking at the statistics for the whole season. Bobby was the only one at the bottom of the leaderboard the week Grocery Store Joe and Juan Pablo were eliminated. Not bad. But still kind of abysmal if you look at some of his average scoring. Bobby's dancing average, I almost screwed that up, was 22.8. What was Milo's? 27.5, time with Juan Pablo when he got voted off. Ivana's, 26.7. Alexis, hers was 26.4. And there were seven freaking contestants that scored a higher dancing average than Bobby. And yet, he's crowned the Mirrorball champion. How? How? Other than his fans, part of the reason was the judges' scores. Most of their scores were fair. And other times, it just seemed like they were going too easy on him. Let's be reasonable. Those tents for his freestyles were way too fucking generous. And I think that's what sealed his fate as the winner over Milo and Ivana. And again, let's be honest, we all knew Alexis was going to place fourth anyway. She was always at the bottom of the leaderboard. Or not at the bottom of the leaderboard, excuse me. She was always in jeopardy. There's my statement that I wanted to use. She was always in jeopardy. She didn't have the votes. She didn't have the support from half of the fandom. The whole showman's romance thing with Alan was a little bit suspicious on the timing. I mean, if you're going to show your feelings for somebody, especially if you're, like, romantically interested in your dancing partner, make it more realistic and natural, like Robert and Kim Herjavec. I mean, I believe they were in love from the very beginning. Alexis and Alan? No, it just all seemed so forced. And before I hear anyone be like, Oh, well, did you even vote? I mean, if you didn't want Bobby to vote, did you even vote for who you wanted? Yes, I fucking did. I used up every shred of voting evidence in my house to vote for Ivana Lynch and Kyo Motsepe every single week they were on the show. I tweeted Every single week, not only to show support, but to remind others to vote their asses off for them. I've, I even voted during the finale, and I live tweeted about others doing the same thing. I'm spewing angry from this, holy shit. When I see someone that is worth voting and worth fighting for on this show, I will work my ass off to make sure I see a good end result. Whether if it means they win, come in second or third, or get eliminated respectfully. So don't you even try and come at me with this shit. Also, I blame ABC for a shit-ass job on how they handled the whole thing of being like, Oh, well, we're not going to give our audience the two-night finale that we had originally promised them. So, yeah, let's just cram everything into one night and everything. And maybe everybody won't be so pissed off afterwards. No, we were still pissed off, bro. We were still pissed off. Are you serious? Like, are you really serious? We we were guaranteed we were going to get a two-night finale after the whole fiasco with the four-week episode fiasco. No, no, that's not what we get at all. So... Thanks, ABC. Thanks for screwing that up, too. Because if we would have gotten our two-night finale like we were originally promised in the beginning of the whole fucking season, I guarantee you that Bobby Bones would not have been crowned the winner of season 27. And that is a goddamn fact. You can judge me all you want, but that is a fact right there. Here's the thing. I am not blaming any of this on Sharna, and the last thing I want to do is take her big moment away from her. We can all agree that she deserved a Mirrorball trophy. We can all agree that she worked so hard since she joined this show, and we know she's one of the best female dancers on Dance with the Stars. 
And when there are so many times, oh my god, I can't even read my own writing, I'm so angry. There were so many times that she should have won. One of which I will be forever spiteful and salty and angry about. The person or persons that took that mirror ball trophy away from Sharna that year know exactly who the fuck they are. The point of the matter is, is that I am happy for Sharna and I am proud that she's finally getting the recognition that she's worked so hard for. However, I cannot help but question how legit the votes were. Did Bobby garner enough votes to... Did, Jesus Christ, Katie. You gotta calm down. Did Bobby garner enough votes than the other three finalists' fan bases? Were the producers just like, Look, Sharon has been kicked around too many times. Just give her the fucking trophy as a consolation prize. Because realistically, and once again... I'm not discrediting Sharna's hard work, and I know she's worked so fucking hard. That's just what this win seemed like to me. A consolation prize. It was just like, congratulations, you put up with so much shit for the last six years. Here's a trophy. What are you going to do now? I'm going to Disneyland. No. If you wanted us to feel something raw and hard and emotion for Sharna... Finally getting the beer ball that she's had her eyes on for so long and so hard working for. You would have gave us someone that was worth a damn. Bobby Bones was not worth the whole criteria. The whole shebang. You know what I mean? Bobby Bones was not worth Sharna getting the mirror ball trophy. And I hate to say that. We all know who she should have gotten the mirror ball trophy with. I'm not spewing names. Y'all know. Y'all fucking know. <sighs> okay. This whole season was a mess. Let's be real. It was a mess from start to finish. Everybody was just like... It was Game of Thrones, basically, this whole season. No one was safe. Grocery Store Joe was in the game. Then there was Bobby Bones. Being the Jon Snow, I guess. I don't know. I don't watch the show. I'm gonna be the bigger person, though, and still congratulate him on winning the whole thing, even though I still don't believe he rightfully earned it for me. I will still congratulate him. And I will still congratulate Sharna on finally getting the one thing she's worked so hard for and had her eye on for so many seasons, for so many years. I will still be the bigger person and congratulate them. And I will congratulate Milo and Whitney and Ivana and Keo and Alexis and Allen on a great season. Just give Keo a better chance next year. That's all I'm asking. Just give him a better chance. Not discrediting my girl Ivana, but give him a better chance of winning the mirror ball because I hated seeing the look on his face and he's going to be a meme for the next few months. I already know it. So yeah, that's all I gotta say. Sound off in the comments below, guys. What did you guys think of this whole fucking ordeal? I'm not even gonna ask questions. If you guys enjoyed this rant, video, discussion, whatever the hell this is, I hope you give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel and you want to see more of me in the future, Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be alerted when I upload new content. I'll try and upload pretty soon and discuss my plans now that we know that Dance with the Stars is not going to come back until probably next fall. So, um, I love you all. I'll see you soon. Take care. Take fucking care.